Hello, my name is Dr Graham Watkinson. I'm a consultant in public health and I lead on the public health aspects in the undergraduate medical curriculum in the University of Exeter Medical School. I also teach on the Environment and Human Health Masters programme and Ebola is a really good example of how environment and human health interact. Ebola in West Africa is a public health crisis that would be likes of which we've never seen before. It's a humanitarian crisis, a social crisis and an economic crisis. The Ebola virus has been around since 1976 when it was discovered in what was Zaire then, it's now the Democratic Republic of the Congo, by the Ebola River. There's been 23 outbreaks up until this current uh, outbreak and this one is by far the worst, killing more people than all the others put together. People become infected with Ebola by direct physical contact with a patient or with someone who's just died of this disease. It's highly transmissible but by direct human contact, which is a good thing in that we can easily prevent this disease spreading by making sure there's a barrier between us as a healthcare worker and the patient. The people who are most at risk are healthcare workers or the family of an individual patient that's been struck down by this virus. Also, importantly, people who come into contact with a dead body. Um, in West Africa at the moment, it's a custom to, for people to, having physically washed the body prior to burial, for people to touch that body, and we're advocating that this, is, this, this tradition ceases immediately. The typical signs and symptoms of an Ebola virus infection start off in a very vague way with temperature, maybe sore throat, malaise, muscular aches and cramps and soon become much, much worse. People start to have vomiting, profuse diarrhoea, rashes, they can bleed internally and externally and also get horrendous infections. So this is a very, very nasty virus to be struck down with. Treatment for Ebola infection is what we call symptomatic treatment. We treat the symptoms the patient presents with. So if we, we make them comfortable, we have to rehydrate them because often they're dehydrated because of the diarrhea and the vomiting. And we also make sure their electrolytes and nutritional needs are met. This in Africa is easier said than done, as you can imagine on the ground. To prevent transmission of this infection, it's very straightforward. We don't touch the person who's got symptoms. We make sure that people wear personal protective equipment. Those people who are wearing that equipment are, uh, are rehearsed and well trained in putting that equipment on and also importantly how to take it off so they don't infect themselves when they're removing contaminated gowns and gloves. The timeline of events for this current Ebola outbreak in West Africa, we believe it started probably on Boxing Day, the 26th of of December 2013 when a two-year-old child became infected. They went on to, to sadly die and in February the outbreak of hemorrhagic illness occurred in Guinea that further spread um, across Guinea um, and later that month it, it occurred in Liberia and then in May 2014 Sierra Leone had cases as well um, and in June Medicine Frontier declared this as an outbreak that was out of control and unfortunately the world really didn't wake up at that, at that plea for help um, and they are they thankfully have now. In the UK if we had a patient with Ebola would be very much on top of the control very very quickly we've got good infrastructure from public health we've got good surveillance systems and also our healthcare workers are being trained uh, how to use personal protective equipment and also ensure that the education uh, of the public awareness is certainly raised and information has gone out we know to schools and colleges and also to uh, primary care, GP practices and our, and our colleagues in the secondary care hospitals as well. In West Africa this, this is very much more problematic because the infrastructure that was there, the little infrastructure that was there has completely been eroded by and uh, overwhelmed by this infection. The number of people who have been infected in West Africa um, to date um, are over 9,000 of which over half of those have sadly died, over 4,500 people died. Healthcare workers feature heavily in this toll, over uh, 240 deaths have been reported but we believe these figures are likely to be extremely conservative and the real figures possibly two or even three times higher than this. So in West Africa this current Ebola outbreak is a clear example of how the physical and social environment determine human health.